Yeah, we're well up. All right, we got a 2009 Nissan Kila. That's one said that the vehicle keeps stolen and they can't figure out what the problem is. So let's see if we can diagnose this vehicle for this customer. All right, so this customer said that he was driving along and then he started to lose power and they stole out, right? So I believe a mechanic came through and replaced a few fuse. I mean, this is the fuse that they say they replaced, which is a lot. And you know, the car started right back up and they was able to drive again and they continued driving the vehicle for the rest of the week and then it stole again, right? And basically, you know, it's embarrassing. So that's when it got me involved, right? So let's put the scan tool on the vehicle and see exactly what's going on and what's communicating and what's not. What it feel like to see the truth and still ignore it. Whether in denial or out of it, it's still important. I'm from where they sold men. Secrets only told friends. Dusty church with old hymns. 24s and chrome rims. Dirty south. Fubu jersey with that five on it. Skeletons and closets on a hanger look alive, don't it? From what I'm seeing here, the ECU is not communicating. I mean, you can tell by the fan running on high speed at all times. And also, too, you're missing a check engine light, right? So that's also an um, uh, indication of that the ECU is not communicating. And you see that all the four codes on this, basically it's going to tell me that I'm losing communication with the ECU. So let's go in the hood and take some a look at certain things and see what's going on. All right, I got the battery maintainer on because the fan is running at all the time with the key on engine on and I got to do my checks, right? And it's really loud, so I just got to, you know, try to talk over it, right? But anytime you get in a vehicle, especially these Nissan, right, and you hear the fan running all constantly, and the check engine light is missing and stuff like that, that means that's a clear indication that you're not communicating with the ECU, right? I'm not sure if it's not powering up or what the problem is, if it's a harness issue or is it the IPM box or is it just the ECU, right? But you see I'm getting all the four codes basically for loss of communication with the ECU. So I got to definitely do some checks and see exactly what. So I'm going to make a report so I can share with the customer okay but you definitely see that we having a loss of communication right on this vehicle you know um you see that we have a can network issue i'm not sure what it is right but the terminal resistor just be in the ECU and it's also just be in the ipdm box on this vehicle so we definitely have to um check that out and see what's going on and see if our terminal resistor is um active but most likely when it's complaining that the ECU is at fault right so I'm going to show you something else, right? You see that I'm not seeing no check engine light. That's let me know that, you know, something is definitely down with the system, right? And scan tool is telling me that. The check light is telling me that. The fan is running. So all these things are indicators that, you know, we have a fault with the ECU on this vehicle, right? So let's open the IPM box and take a look and see if we gain power or if the fuse popped again, right? So we, if it did pop, so we got to... You know figure out why it's blowing keep why they keep blowing and you know um we're not going to gonna replace the fuse we're going to do some checks all right so key on engine off right and my test light on battery negative i'm just going to check all the fuse to see what's working and what's not right the 20 amp fuse for this system is the ecu fuse yes it is all right so um with that now i'm going to do some checks and see why this fuse is blowing all right, let me show you exactly what I use to find, you know, blown fuses. I got my test light in place of the fuse, okay? And I also got my fuse body with a buzzer hooked up, right, in case I need it. But um, what I'm going to do is just take this fuse out, put the test light on, put the key on. I'm going to do a wiggle test. So once I put the key on, I see the light lit up, right, like it is right now. That's basically telling me that I have a dead short right and i can go and shake the harness and once the light come off that let me know that you know i'm in the area where the where it's touching some metal or something like that right but in this case i'm going to take it out i'm going to put my fuse saver because it have a buzz on it and it alerts me right um it also have a trip button on it so you can just switch it off right when it gets hot right but you got to reset it so once i put that in i shake the harness and i hear the buzzer goes off then you know um that save me from running through fuses right so let's try that and see what's going on i did the diagnose um off camera so i'm just showing you exactly what you know i did right so i got my fuse saver still hooked on to the fuse box the ipm box where the 20 amp fuse was remember this one was blown so you actually hear the fan stop right 
So I'm just going to scan the vehicle to see if I'm getting into the ECU. Right? If I'm getting to read the ECU, that's letting me know that, I mean, what I did was correct. Right? So let's see if I can get into the ECU. Right? If I can, which it is reading, it is communicating, that's letting me know something they touched was causing the fuse to pop. Right? So, um, yeah. So right now we're reading four codes. So I'm reading the knock sensor circuit. So, yep. So that's letting me know that what I did or whatever I touch is along the line where the fuses pop, right? So let me show you exactly where I touched, right? So it's gonna come out of here. Okay, so I was in this area right here, close to the battery. And if I shake it, the harness, you might hear the fuse saver buzzer go off again, right? So let's shake it. There you have it. So I'm gonna reset the fuel saver. We gotta wait till it cool down. I'm gonna reset it, put it on. So I'm gonna shake the harness real quick, right here. I'm gonna put the fuel saver back on. And there you have it. So we definitely have a short right here in this area. Right, so let me get some lights. Hey, let me get you a close up on where the problem is. You see this red tape right there? You see where it's touching that metal? That's a problem right there, right? So um, let's, let me see if I can get you closer. This is where the, um, what you call it? Where the fault was on this vehicle, causing all the fuse to blow in the IPDM box, right? So I'm not sure exactly who did this makeup stuff but we definitely got to repair it and yo that should be it so let me just take off the battery pole and we do my repairs it don't look like the wires are fused but you never know so as I said man let me just take off all these things and do my fix and that should be it I believe alright so look at right here Oh, that burn. Let's see if we could get. All these wires exposed right here. And we actually damage. So it doesn't look like it, you know, damage. It just broke the insulation a little bit. You can see this brown one here. Let's probably just put a little tape on them. All right then, secure it. That's why it's so important when you working on electrical stuff, um, electrical harness, you gotta secure the harness, man. This harness, it had a lot of things that's moving and the, with the vibration, it cause the vehicle to you know the harness to be rubbing on the sharp edges and eventually it will pop that's how it works right so like I said I'm just gonna fix this and we're gonna redo our checks secure the harness a little better than what we have going on here and yeah I'm just gonna clean this off put some tape on it I was able to secure the harness right I just put a tie strap on the um, harness so it won't vibrate and be you know um, cutting it into that anymore also put a little conduit thing on it so it don't um, you know damage that again right also replace the fuse you know um, close back down the IPM box with the repairs done let's put the key on engine off and see if we get the check light back on if the car starts right up right let me switch it off real quick and show you exactly what's going on all right so key on engine off you see the check light came back on the vehicle start right up all right so we're going to definitely call it a fix right now um, that was successful they do not change the fuse unless you find the problem right changing the fuse doesn't fix the car it just temporarily gets you back on the road sometimes right but um let me clear the codes that's on the system and get this vehicle back to the customer all right so we're going to scan the vehicle we're going to clear all the codes on this vehicle and we should be good to go right so 
if you don't have a fuse saver you can use a park light bulb right and just basically get so you can insert it into where the fuse go right and use the visual you know light so when you're shaking the harness you can if you see light come off that means you're good to go is you are in that area right so i mean straight to the point right until next time y'all take it easy don't forget to hit that bell notification man i appreciate all the support until next time y'all take it easy Thank you.